third party, POV. The pack was in position outside the old prison. Alpha Felix was listening through the wall in an attempt to hear where his cousin was being kept. The tall girl could definitely hold her own against a few rogue, but even then he worried for her safety if she were to be caught in battle. After 15 minutes of listening to gross men talk about some girls they assaulted, he had enough. The pack waited for the signal before closing in on the prison. At the sound of a deep howl that bellowed through the forest, the fighting began. Alicia's POV I was carried through the hallways and back into what I assumed to be the leader's domain. The place reeked of alcohol and sex. Two smells I've grown to loathe over these past hours. My stomach twisted at the rank stench of the person these people called Master. He sat in the old chair with a yellow-toothed smile on his crusty lips. I was gagged and my hands were bound together with zip ties. Then, my worst nightmare happened. The man holding me? Well, I would rather eat alive a rat than touch him. He sat me on the master's lap. I internally begged and pleaded for him to pick me back up, but with no such luck. The pig-faced asshole rubbed a crummy hand along my waist and up my thigh. It was at this moment I started crying. I hadn't let anyone see or hear me cry, besides the small hand. I prided myself on not being easily broken or scared, but I just couldn't take it anymore. One could argue it was his stench that made my eyes water, but I couldn't hold back the whimpers and sobs escaping my gagged mouth. I prayed to the moon goddess harder than I ever have before. I would sacrifice countless of my pretty dresses for wealthy ways of living just to rid myself of this parasite of a man. I would gladly swallow my pride and let a prince rescue me and sweep me off my feet like the stories I so loathed. When a loud howl and the sound of fighting broke out, I knew my prince was finally here. What seemed like years passed before the door was flung open by a body that was hurled at it. My heart jumped to my throat when I spotted my cousin, my prince. Warriors flooded the room as fighting broke out between the two sides. I couldn't move from this filthy lap. All I could do was watch and hope they saved me soon. Get your fucking hands off her! Came an all too familiar yell. My prince was currently ripping another wolf's head off. Then he turned back to face us with a fire in his eyes. He cleared the other rogues and rushed us. I fell to the ground as he tackled the man holding me. We rolled on the ground until I eventually scrambled away. Our beta, Colton, got to me and made quick work of the zip ties and cloth gag. He then shifted and broke my feet shackles with his strong jaws. In just one chomp, I was freed of that iron prison. My attention went back to my savior as he grabbed the master by his shirt and collar and lifted him up off the ground. P put me down, the man begged with ugly tears running down his face. I walked over and stood in front of him. My own tears were still falling. By now the fighting in the room had ceased as our warriors had put down the last of the rogues present. With all eyes on me, I stood tall and angry. Beta Colton gave me a golden blade and I stalked towards the blubbering mess in front of me. P please please have mercy. I swear you'll never see me again. I scoffed and choked back a laugh. Your filthy pig face will never see the light of day again. You don't deserve a quick and easy death, B but I'm tired of hearing your voice. He squirmed and kicked, trying to get free. It took every bone in my body not to yell and scream profanities at him like I so wished, but I had to be professional, as professional as an alpha can get after being kidnapped. With one swift slice of my knife, his life was over. Felix dropped his body, and it disintegrated in front of my eyes. That's when I realized why I was given a golden knife. These bastards weren't rogues. They were demons. Actual demons. Felix shifted back, and for once, I didn't care that he was butt naked. I hugged him as tight as I could and took in his familiar scent, the scent of a Sunday morning book session, the scent of running around the yard with my fur flying in the wind as we raced to get home for supper, the scent of late-night cuddles when storms get too loud, the scent of safety, the scent of home. Are you okay? Did he do anything to you? I swear if he hurt you, I'll... I choked out a laugh and just hugged him tighter. I'm okay. He got here before he could do anything. I love you. I love you too, Sia.
those few words were enough to calm my racing heart. Just hearing his voice again was enough. When I was just starting to think, the last thing I would hear him do was yell as we fought those mornings ago. My heart immediately picked up again as I felt a sharp pain run through my body. That little cold hand was back in the cell all alone. I pulled away from Felix and looked him in the eyes. They were bright golden. We need to go save someone else. Follow me. I think I remember the way back. We walked through what I now knew to be the old prison, twisting and turning through the hallways I barely remember as I tried to lead us back to my little friend. Who are you looking for? Felix was stern, and his voice had lost all the affectionate tone he carried before. The, the cell I was kept in, I wasn't alone. Someone, well, someone was in the one beside me. He glared coldly around the hallway. Do they need medical attention? We don't have a doctor with us. My heart sped up as I recognized the door to the cell room. Yes, they might even be dead. I'm not sure. His glare didn't change, but I saw the look of sympathy in his eyes. They got the door open, and I rushed down the hall to the silver door. I could see my breath as I frantically searched for the keys or something to pick the lock. H hey, are you in there? I'm back. We're here to save you. No response. Do you know who keeps the keys? Can you tell us? No response. I wasn't expecting an answer, but it was worth a shot. As I continued to search with no hope, I decided to just check if they were still alive. I bent down and opened the hatch at the bottom of their cell door. When I peeked inside, it was pitch black, aside from two glowing eyes staring me down from the far right corner. Alicia's POV those eyes definitely weren't human. One was blood red, and the other a yellow-orange mix. They were actually glowing, too. I could see the reflection in a frozen puddle of blood. Felix pulled me up from the ground, and I was given a shawl one of the warriors brought. They're alive, but how are we going to get the door open? He paused, letting out a stressed huff before facing the others. Go search the bodies for any keys. Now! They scrambled to obey his orders while we continued to search for a different way in. Felix handed me a torch, and I flicked the button. The light blinded me for a split second before my eyes adjusted. Hey, hey, can you see any way out from in there? No response. I took that as a no and continued the search. Around 30 minutes passed, and we still weren't able to open the door. Felix was more than pissed. It seemed he was getting more agitated with every passing second. When there were no more bodies to check, we tried all the keys. I started crying again. Felix hugged me as I sniffled and tried to stay calm. We have one last option. He looked to the door and then to the warriors. The first person to break this door down gets a day off from patrol. The hinges are all old and rusting. Do your best. One by one, the warriors shifted and rushed to the door, hitting into it with such force that the walls shook. Finally, after 15 minutes, the hinges gave out and the door caved in. The warrior who managed this quickly got off the silver door before they got burned. I ran into the cell, almost dropping my torch. When I shined the light on my friend, my heart dropped. Felix is POV. When Alicia pointed the light towards a pair of glowing eyes, a small body was illuminated. At that moment, I wanted to revive the sick bastard we killed so I could kill him again. What I saw made my blood boil. This person was so little. They couldn't have been taller than 4'2 or 4'3, maybe. They were as thin as a skeleton with nothing but a dirty, bloody t-shirt on. What made me really mad was the heavy golden chains wrapped around their ankles, wrists, neck, and stomach. Their body was covered in black and purple bruises. Several burns scattered along both arms and legs. A silver muzzle went over their mouth and nose. They looked terrified, just huddled in that corner, squinting against the light of Alicia's torch. Oh, God. Saya had tears rolling down her face as she stood trembling. I took a shaky breath and walked over to the small person. They also had a river of tears. I was worried they'd hurt their head from shaking so hard against the wall. I knelt down in front of them and started to unwrap the chains. They didn't make any noise, and I could barely hear a faint heartbeat as it struggled to keep working. 
Their quiet breath was wheezy and hard to hear. They didn't carry a scent at all, besides the musky smell of the environment. At this point, I was getting pissed at these golden chains and just ripped them off with my hands. It hurt, but didn't burn like silver would. It was then I noticed the blackened skin that was hidden by the chains, and I knew this little person was of the demon race. My heart thumped harshly against my ribs while I worked to remove the rest of the gold shackles. Every movement I made had to have been extremely painful for them, but still they didn't make a sound. Saya was a blubbering, coughing mess beside me as Colton attempted to comfort her. This was definitely not what she had been expecting. I'm going to pick you up, okay? With those burns on your feet, it isn't safe for you to walk. I didn't get a response but they didn't protest when I gently wrapped my arms around them. As I stood, my fingers began tangling where our skin touched. My heartbeat skyrocketed, and it felt like everything else went silent. I couldn't hear Saya crying. I couldn't hear Colton talking. All I heard was the heartbeat of this little demon. My wolf went crazy, running and scratching at the back of my mind. He had absolutely lost it, and I couldn't blame him. I was freaking out too, but stayed calm on the outside. My senses were screaming at me, and I didn't know why until I heard it. Mate. The thought broke me inside. I started tearing up as I held the gaze of my little mate. I took a breath and tried not to start trembling while I turned to face Saya. Let's get out of here. We need the pack, doctor. She nodded, and I let Colton lead her by the hand as we walked out of the prison. Before we even made it out of the building, I felt a sharp sting against my arm. My little mate had passed out, and the silver muzzle was burning into my bicep. I couldn't stand it and had to shift them around so the silver wasn't touching me. When the struggling heartbeat stopped, I felt like all the breath left my lungs. Saya began bawling again before I remembered something about demons. Sometimes, when they're very injured, they can go into a coma-like state. We call that the dead sleep because their hearts appear to stop. But, in reality, they're just beating so quietly our ears can't pick it up. I felt for a pulse and just hoped to moon goddess I was right. When I found the pulse, I was so desperately searching for my wolf, and I calmly sat down. Saya, he's in a dead sleep. Everything's okay. She sniffled and nodded, trying to calm herself. After what seemed like years, we finally made it back to the vehicles. Saya sat down in the front passenger seat while Colton got in the driver's side. I sat in the back with my little mate held close to my chest. The drive was long and filled with uneasy silence as we all waited to hear the heartbeat again. I had to keep checking their pulse just to stay calm, but my wolf was still going crazy. When we finally arrived at the pack house, I rushed both Saya and my little mate to the infirmary. Colton had to help Saya up the stairs as I met with the pack doctor. Oh my gods, is that? I let out an impatient breath and shot a glare in his direction. We don't have time. They're in a dead sleep. This is serious. He shook his head and barked some orders at the other doctors and nurses before taking my mate from my arms and disappearing into one of the rooms. Another doctor came and brought us into a different room to check Saya's injuries. After she was cleared, we were led into the room they would wheel my mate's bed into for recovery. I got Saya in my lap as we sat in a chair. This has been the most stressful time of my life, and I just needed her close right now. Luckily, she didn't protest and just snuggled into my shoulder. I waited for what felt like centuries until I eventually fell asleep.